bottom. People call you the underdog. They think you're the okay. underdog, but you're at the bottom. But we going straight to the top. Straight to the top. Today, we king. I'm a king. Sometimes I feel like I'm petty. In the pits living my dream. I don't think that they ready. Yeah. Area 51 podcast right here. You already know what we do. We're going to talk about a little bit of racing and we're going to talk about pacing back and forth. We're trying to figure out who going who gonna to win and who going to come at the bottom. Let's go. This is Cap Houston right here. Bobby, what you got for me? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Bobby. This is episode 17. We've got Joe from the Rusty Wallace Driving School. For driving experience and we got dave in here as the guest how you doing dave doing well doing well how are you bobby you doing good joe how you doing i'm good guys how are you bobby and dave how are you doing good uh, i want to take a moment real quick to uh give a shout out to rob um he's not able to make it tonight he had a family emergency and we want to wish him the best and his family and we're we're thinking about you buddy um Next week, we will uh, have Dave and uh, Rob on the show. I will not be here. So just an FYI, um, I will be in sunny Florida. Miami! <laughs> <laughs> so we got a good show for you next week, but enough about that. We got Joe from the Rusty Wallace Driving Experience tonight. Joe, let's, uh, let's talk about how you... Um, got into NASCAR and and ARCA and all that, and also about the Rusty Wallace driving experience. Well, um, I've been a avid Hendrick fan forever. You know, um, I think my first race was 1989 Atlanta, and um, I was a mechanic at Western Auto, and uh, they had uh, the AC Delco guy come in and gave us some free tickets to Atlanta. Nobody wanted them, but I took them. So I took my dad to Atlanta in November, I think it was 89, and we had a uh, a pit road tour. And uh, we went on this little tour, and I looked at my father, and he looked at me, and I said, the heck with this tour, let's go off on our own. So we we broke off and got away, and and uh, we did our own thing. Um, so I guess that was my first NASCAR experience live at, at, at Atlanta, and ever since... You know, I've been, um, you know, on TV watching and watching and watching and did some racing down in Florida myself and and uh, really couldn't afford it. You know, um, tried to dabble here and there, but could never make anything of it. And, um, you know, as time goes on, you know, you just, um, you know, time runs out, money runs out, whatever, and uh, moved up north you know, and, and did some little racing here and there, but, um, just being a, um, a big NASCAR fan forever. Um, I met a guy who, uh, made these custom guitars that are behind me and I was kind of like his PR guy. Um, so we did stuff for Jeff Gordon's charities, uh, his, his children's hospital. And I would reach out and, you know, do the PR work for some of that stuff, uh, donations for the guitars and what we were going to get in return. Um, we did some stuff with Richard Childress, um, you know, uh, Hendrick Motorsports, uh, Nice uh, truck series there. Um, and it just seemed like it grew. Um, you know, Facebook groups. I had a Jeff, I have a Jeff Gordon group. I have a Larson group. Just meeting people through social media, um, at the track, it just grew and grew. Um, and there's a fella at, um, Rusty Wallace racing who knew I did some racing in the past. And, uh, Steve church, he, uh, texted me one day and, and asked me if I could do an event at Oswego, New York, um, late model track. And, um, I went there and did the, uh, you know, riding the the riding or the driving for them, giving the rides, and I had a blast. You know, then I was asked to go to Loud, and it was just a part time thing. You know, I would do a, a an event here or there, and uh, then the following season it became more and more. And this is my third season, so um, I have a ball. I mean, um, I see, you know, people 
from all walks of life that come out to do the experience, you know, from the avid average race fan on Sunday to a dirt racer that wants to come out and try an asphalt car or, or somebody that wants to buy a, a, a track day car, they want to come out and drive one, or just somebody that has it on their bucket list, you know, um, 89 year old woman, grandma that wants to come out and take a ride. You know, we, um, we have everybody in the cars. Um, so I guess in a quick sense of how I got into it, um, it was all because of Chucky Steve Church making that text to me, asking me to come out and do one event, and now I'm knee deep in it. I can't wait for that text. Yeah, I'm right. still I'm still waiting at it. I'm I'm branching out. What what a better job than driving a race car, you know, just for fun. Yeah, you know, on on the weekends, like you said, sharing the fan experience with right. you know uh, a fan like myself with little to no racing experience to you know you know grandma, teenage kids, and then like you said, you got a guy that might have ran a wing wing sprint and now wants to try to go out for you know say a half model, late model, and just wants to see what it's like. What, what kind of who else can do that? Right, right. And afford it. Like, I mean, build a car and build a track date car or something, you know, like an old cup car and take it to the track or or just build a, a an asphalt late model and, and go on a Saturday night and see what that costs, right? Um, where can somebody go and spend a few hundred bucks, you know, on a Saturday or Sunday and come out and and learn, you know, the line from us and you know, learn your acceleration points, your braking points, and and the basics to get in that car and run 150 miles an hour. You know, um, there you can't afford to do that on a Saturday from at home. You know, so it's very affordable, um, and it's a it's a blast. Right, I I could only I could only imagine. I mean. Um, you know, we did Dover last week. Um, I know there was a fellow that we were talking about last night that was there. Uh, he had an Area 51. He had a 51 hat on. He had a Jeremy Clemens hat on. And that's I noticed an I noticed that, you know, so I'm uh, I'm like, well, that's a, I mean, he must have been 30 feet away from me. I'm like, that's a Jeremy Clemens hat, wasn't it? Isn't it? And he's like, yeah. And uh, I actually hooked him up because I there was a little hiccup and uh, he went away happy. He went on, he had a great time, but, um, hopefully he's on here tonight. He is. He was the first comment. Well, <laughs> hey, I don't see the comments. I don't know how. He said me, LOL. There you go. <laughs> right. Next time I'll make sure I get that picture. Got to come out next time. We're back there in, in June, I believe. So come on back out. So tell us about how people can get a hold of the Rusty Wallace driving schools or driving experience. So that way they can get a hold of you or get a hold of whoever to be able to do these packages and what they entitle. So uh race with rusty.com. Um, I'm not sure of the phone number. I just know it's race with rusty.com. That's the easiest way to get on there and, you know, go through the different packages, uh, 60, 70% off. Sometimes there's, Father's Day specials. Uh, a lot of people get these for gifts. Um, I hear that all the time. Well, I got this for Father's Day or, you know, um, I got it for Christmas. Um, I hear that all the time. They make a great gift. Um, or, you know, uh, people come out, um, you know, they have a group. Uh, Dover, we had a, uh, uh, a power boat club come out and... Uh, they brought a bus over, a bunch of them, and they did 30 lap packages and they had a great time. Um, so I don't know how they put their experience together one at a time or what, but we do group events, uh, private events, you know, corporate events. We do it all um, from the late model cars to the cup cars to dirt. I know there is an event this weekend, the Formula Four cars, which are a smaller indie style car. Um, we have an exotic package, uh, exotic cars. I think we have a Ferrari and a Lamborghini. Um, but um, I don't, I'm not too much into the exotic cars. I'm more of the stock car guy. So, um, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of 
different packages and a lot of different uh, things that we do to pick from. Nice. Now, with the exotics, is it more of a road course event or? Yeah, um, it used to be on a skid pad. You know, you go to Orlando Speedway or somewhere, there's a skid pad and they would set up the cones like an autocross type thing. But this year they went to uh, the road course. Um, so they're putting the exotic cars out on the road course where you can, um, I forget what I was told, where I was told about it, but they were like 140 or 50 miles an hour down a back stretch. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, to me, I, I like the, um, the traction control, the, the brake assist. I want all that right here in me, right? <laughs> my, my hands and my feet in that NASCAR cup car, um, you know, the Lamborghini and the Ferrari, they have all that built in at computer technology. So I'm not into that. I'm old school guy where, you know, I want to get in the car and, and be able to feel it and know what what's coming. I don't need a computer. <laughs> now, I know you guys are going to be going to where'd you say next? We're going to Richmond. We have a Richmond event Saturday. And then uh, a South Boston uh, late model event on Sunday. Uh, the following week will be Saturday and Sunday, Bristol, Tennessee, which I've never, I've been there and I've driven, you know, down into the track. I've never done an event there, which um, if I get to go do that, it'll be cool. So, so I, I know so I Rob and myself and possibly Dave are going to make a trip to Kentucky. That's a fun track. You guys will enjoy that. Yeah, October. I don't know the exact date, but October, uh, our um, Kentucky date, you were talking about Michigan, but you guys won't be around. Uh, Michigan's a cool track. It's kind of flat, like, you know, it's like an Iowa D-shaped, where Iowa is, what, a mile, and uh, Michigan is two. So um, Michigan is fast, but, you know, uh, Kentucky, um, a mile and a half, I believe is uh, just as uh, just as fast, you know, um, very abrasive on the tires. Uh, we go through a lot of tires at Kentucky. Kentucky is a, a, a cool venue. I wish they still race there. Now, when you were talking about the event packages, um, you know, you were talking about the, the ride-alongs. Uh, you know, um, I know in the, the past I've read about, you know, uh, school and having – you know, it's actually a full all day event uh, to hop into these cars, whether um, you're driving, whether you're a passenger. Can you kind of right. go through some of the, you know, uh, what are some of the packages? All right. So um, they people can do just a ride along. They can come out and just take a ride, three laps, five laps, 10 laps, whatever they want to purchase as far as a ride along. They can do uh, a ride and a drive which is a ride along three laps and then they, whatever they purchase, uh, 10 laps up to a hundred laps. If they want to go out and drive a hundred laps, go for it. Um, we had a couple of friends, uh, Rusty Wallace, uh, at Dover, they did 70 lap packages. Um, they walked up to me after they were done, they had a blast and they walked up to me wore out and they were like, they had a, um, you know, a different, an appreciation for the guys that race on Sunday because after 70 laps, they were whooped. And I said, well, could you imagine 500 laps out there with 39 other cars? You know, right. so um, that's what the experience gives. It, it gives people the appreciation or it shows them what these drivers go through on a Sunday, you know, from when they go out for 10 or 20 laps or whatever they do. Um, we have uh, a class every hour. So um, you come to the track. um you know, you sign up online or whatever, and you pick your time slot, whether it's 9, 10, 11, 12, or so on. Um, you go into class, you sign in at the trailer, you go into class at, let's say, 9 o'clock. You come out at, you know, it's like 45 minutes long in the class. Um, they'll teach you the basics, you know, what uh, your safety equipment, right? So that's huge. So everything from your, your Hans device to your, you know, your five point harness to how to get out of the car in an emergency, you know, your window net release, your belt release, your steering wheel um, coming off the collar, 
um, you know, um, the driving line. Um, we tape the track and we put a green box where we want the student to accelerate. We put a an orange box uh, where we want people to let off. Um, we want to keep people safe. You know, what we do is very dangerous, right? And uh, we all want to be safe. We want our students safe. We want to be safe. So that's number one. Um, so it, the way we take the track, it's like a, like a video game. Like, uh, you know, like when I was a kid, pole position, it was a, a you know, a, a dotted line. You know, right. so down front, down the front stretch, you got a green hash mark, and on the on the turns, you got orange hash hash marks. So you split that down the middle of the car. You listen to your spotter that's in your ear. They're up in the tower spotting for you, um, and it's um, we go. So you, if you go into class at nine, you come out about nine forty five. You suit up. Um, you go over into the ride and drive line, or you can go right and drive the car. You don't have to take the ride along. Um, you know, it's totally up to the person how they want to do it. Um, I suggest the ride and then go drive because your drive will be much faster. Um, really? Okay. It, yeah. Cause you get in the car with that driver, you get to go out there, you get to see what you were just taught in class. Um, okay. You get to see those marks. You get to see and feel what the track feels like. Um, you're not just jumping in a car and going out there with, you know, blind, basically, uh, with just the knowledge of what, what you learned in class. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, a ride first will show you or the the student, you know, the basic and then get in your car and um yeah, you know, I always tell people, you know, don't go out there and send it, you know. You know, <laughs> we, you know we've had it done. We've had it done. I mean, I, I've heard it all, you know. Can I go through turn one flat foot? Can I go wide open? No, you can't, you know. Uh, it's been tried. It's and not very much succeeded. Um, I'm dropping the hammer. Right. Don't there drop we go. The hammer. We watch too many movies, right? Dropping a hammer, I'm going. <laughs> um, it doesn't work out that well. And I usually um, give people the advice of go to your ability. You know, you see a ride driver go by you on the outside 40 miles an hour faster than what you're going. Don't assume that you can keep up with them. You know, don't even try it. Just go to your ability. Do your own thing. Have fun. And... You, you know, problems and stuff happens when you go above the that ability, right? You see, so, that, that's that's my mentality. Hey, that that guy just passed me. Yeah, I'm gonna jump behind him, see what he's doing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, I, I've done that to Jordan Williams, one of our uh, ARCA drivers. That usually he, uh, I think he just did Nashville, and he'll do uh, Michigan out his way. And I tell you what. He knows Michigan, right? So the first time I road drove at Michigan, um, I'm going in a turn and he's way up here. And I'm like, what's he doing up there? <laughs> you know, and, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm 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 bad, right? I'm I'm home, but and here he comes driving around me on the outside, and I'm like, okay, what did I do wrong? So I hop in behind him and uh followed him down the back stretch and dove in a three and i i didn't like it it was kind of like uh okay right i'm not doing that again um afterward i had asked him you know what is your entry you know in this three and he's like well you know it's the point of no return and i'm like what do you mean he goes what's the point of no return if you go past that you're done and i'm like done he goes yeah the wall and i'm like no, nah, you know, I think I'll play it safe a little bit. You know, uh, I'll I'll go in here. You go in up there. That, that's fine. We're not out here racing, right? We're we're out here giving rides, and but but it was pretty cool to, you know, to follow him through the turns and and I could handle it. Um, it just it was just, it just seemed like it took forever to get through the turn, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you come out of four on the front stretch, and you're so high up by the wall. I'm like, okay. That's not very comfortable for me. So, you know, is that above my, you know, my ability? No. Um, 
I'm going to, I'm going to back it down a little bit. I'm going to, you know, I know I can do that, but I'm, I'm going to stay down here a little bit, you know, uh, Dover, I've, I've done Dover three, four, five times and I, I can drive Dover, um, uh, Dover is fun. Yeah, I can maybe some of the cars I can, you know, um, take in there past the uh, lift point. But we want to give a ride and we want to give, you know, a teachable ride. Right. So we want to teach the students and we want them to feel, you know, lifting. We want them to feel the braking, the G-forces, the acceleration. We want them to feel all that. Um, there might be some tracks at land or something where, you can put these cars almost flat out and go like on a Sunday, but that's boring. You yeah. know, that's, that's just riding around. Um, you know, I want, you know, students to feel everything, you know, I want to, you know, I want to come down a front stretch at 150 miles an hour and lift and watch the students feet rate, you know, rise up off the floor of the car, you know, or come out of four and get this far away from the wall and they that's bring their arm in. You know, and they can they can feel the wall going by them, you know. So um, I want a student to get that experience, you know, right. and, and that's that's what it's about. Right. It's about putting a smile on their face, you know, and they get out of the car and they're like, man, that was a blast. When do I I'll get to do it again? again? Right. Right. And, and I'll I'll come in and shut the car off and I'll be like, well, just go do that now. And they're like, yeah, sure, you know, <laughs> and and uh, they're like, yeah, I'll go try and do that, but not like that, you know, not right. that fast. Um, so um, I kind of got off, but we do a class every hour. So from nine to ten, you know, you you're in your class, you know, you come out at 45, you suit up and then we have an hour to get through whether it's 10 students in a class or or 15 students in a class. So whatever the ride packages are, I know um, our 11 o'clock class at Dover um, had about 10 30 lap packages in it all one time. Um, there's uh, Gen 4 cars. There's a couple of those left. Uh, there's some COT cars, which are car tomorrow. Um, if you remember back, what was that about 08 09 where they had that wing on the back the mm -hmm. car tomorrow that nobody liked i guess yeah. um and then Fast we're into our, we're into our gen six cars um so our new napa car our new um our new arson car uh i think we got a caterpillar eight car now um they're all gen six cars so i think we're like graduating and, and getting more and more and more into the gen six car um, you can upgrade to an extreme car, which um, there's a little bit more horsepower, um, a little bit more RPM, maybe. I think um, um, when I'm working pit road, I I don't drive much anymore. Um, I started out as a ride driver, and I graduated to uh, running events. Um, I bring cars. I have a shop here at my house. I live in New York State, so. Um, I have a shop here in my house. Um, I get up in the morning, I walk across the driveway with my coffee and uh, open the garage doors and work on cars. Um, what kind of job? I mean, I have no reason to be late to work, right? It's right across the driveway. Um, so, but what kind of job can, it's it's heaven, you know, to have a, kind of a job and the responsibility right so i have the responsibility of three cup cars or three late models whatever i have at the house um so yeah so um extreme cars uh cot gen 6 uh gen 4 i think we have two gen 4 cars left um one is the 46 days of thunder car and uh then I think we have a Bud 8 car, um, an old Dale Jr. Bud 8 car is a Gen 4. Um, those are the two that are left. Uh, we had a Jeff Gordon um, Gen 4 car, which when we go back to a couple years ago, um, the student trying to follow the ride driver at Loudon, tried to keep up and ended up in the tires at the beginning of pit wall. And mm -hmm. that, retired, that retired that car forever. Um, 
things do happen. That's why we gear everything around safety, right? So um, if everybody has their hands on or, you know, are buckled in correctly, um, you're you're safer in that race car than you are on the interstate and an everyday car. So I have a question for you. Cause I, the, we, Rob and I were talking about this last night. Now, are all the cars manual or are there some automatics? So there used to be an automatic and nobody wanted to drive it. Um, it got crashed and it never got fixed. Um, nobody wanted to drive it. Um, I've asked the, the boss, I've said, well, how come we don't have any trucks? I would love to drive a Craftsman Series truck. And and I know we have a couple that we make into track day trucks or, or we uh, fix them, wrap them, and, and build them to what people want. Um, I think we had an old Jimmy Spencer truck, an old uh, Craftsman, an old Craftsman Series truck that was steel body. Uh, it was made into a, a street legal truck. Um, and I was told that nobody wants to drive them. Nobody wants to drive the truck. Nobody, there may be one person who wants an automatic car. Um, if there's somebody that comes out, a student that comes out that doesn't drive manual, um, we put it in high gear and we'll start it. And they can just put, put, put out pit road and out to the apron, onto the track. The uh, spotter takes over and they're good. Um, the only time they're going to use the clutch pedal is when they come in. And half the time they don't. They come in, but uh, uh, the, car, <laughs> the car shuts off, right? Um, but that's all right. Uh, that's why you got the Hans device on, <laughs> right? We we get high gear starts all the time, and you know, like we get different types of people. We get, you know, their different abilities, right? So, um, you know, I know we've had uh, paraplegics we've put in the car, not driving, but out for a ride. We've had autistic kids in the cars. Um, you know, parents bring you you know, their their children to the racetrack and, and look at me and say, you know, if he doesn't say anything, that's okay because he doesn't talk much. But if he screams, you know you're having fun. He you know he's having a good time. And I didn't hear him stop screaming for the three laps. So I knew he was having a good time, you know. Um I, I've had like we were talking earlier, I've had the people trying to push the fake brake pedal over there in the passenger seat. So different people, um, the cars are all different. Um, some of them for taller people, shorter people, um, heavier people, people with uh, broad chefs, whatever. Um, we get 99% of the people in them cars. And I've probably gotten people in the cars that shouldn't have been you know it was a lot of work to get them in the car but we got them in there and we got their experience done um but um you know when we're running pit road you know the 46 car might have a different seat in it than the eight car um you know the i call it the home depot tony stewart lazy boy you know it seemed like tony stewart if it was set up for him he liked the lazy boy he sit way back like he was almost sitting in the back seat you know I know when he was racing the SRX series, wasn't it Tony who was like one-handed? He was just like cruising around one-handed in the SRX series. So it seemed like our Home Depot cars are bigger. You know, the seats are a little bigger. The window openings are a little bigger, um, you know, for taller, broader people, you know. Um, just you've, just you've, imagine trying to fit him into an Indy car. That's a challenge. You know, Tony's not real big. I mean, Larson, like, so figure you get Larson or, or Gordon back in his driving days where Gordon has, what, a size eight shoe, you right. know? I seen P we had Larry Fitzgerald last year out in Phoenix get in the car. I mean, he's not super huge, but I mean, he's a football player, right? So um, we got him in a car. Um, but people don't realize when they buy this for a Christmas gift or a Father's Day gift, wait, who am I giving this to, I guess, right? Uh, <laughs> is it going to work when they get there, right? So, like, the Gen 4 cars, the, the window's kind of slanted in the front, so the window opening is not huge. You know, I have sometimes have an issue if there's a headrest over here getting in the Gen 4 car. 
but I do it every day. So um, it gets no. handled. It gets handled. You know, we we handle every situation that comes. I mean, eighty year old grandma. If I got to put a tire next to the car and have her stand on it, or just pick her up and slide her in the window, <laughs> and it's been done. It's been done. You know, um, the little 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 grandma the other day at Dover. We just picked her up and slid her in the window, you know, belted her in and, and said, have fun, you know. But um this is a this is a blast. It's a blast. Now, do you ever get the the person that's like, man, I you know, set on a number, you know, kind of like when you're racing go-karts, you know, I want the you know, I'm a Kyle Bush fan. You know, that's after Tony Stewart started to retire. I became a Kyle Busch fan. And, you know, if there's an 18 car out there, that's the one I'm going after. Do you right. ever get anybody like that that's like, we, I don't I don't care how it fits. You know, that's, mm-hmm. yeah, Junior's car. I want to race Junior's car. We get that all the time. Um, and if we can accommodate it, we'll make it happen, right? Uh, so I have the 88 Mountain Dew car here. And, and I live out in the middle of nowhere. And people stopping in front of my house, click, click. I have the 48 car sitting here, too, the Lowe's car. People stop in front of my house, click. I'm like, who's in front of my house? Why? <laughs> nobody, stop, nobody stops at my house. Or um, if I have the 48 and the 88 on a trailer uh, going down a highway, um, it seems wow. like those cars draw big attention. You know, yeah. um, oh, my God, it's Junior's car. Or... You know, Jimmy Johnson's car, you know, I pull into Walmart and I could get hung up at Walmart for an hour. You know, like um, I live over by Cooperstown, New York. So during during baseball, all the kids. Right. So I'd be trying to get out of town and stop at Walmart real quick. And that might turn into an hour and a half event because they're all coming up to the trailer, looking at the cars and. Of course, I'm going to hand out business cards and I'm going to answer questions and all that, right? So finally, after an hour, hour and a half, I got to go. <laughs> but I don't want to say, look, I got to go. You know, I, I got to be somewhere, but, um, you know, kind of try and find a spot where I can escape real quick. But uh, truck stops, you know, everybody's always asking. And I have stacked business cards in the, you know, in the truck. I'll hand them out. I'll tell them about it. And it seems that a lot of people don't know about the experience. And it's all over Facebook. I mean, we have our sponsored, you know, um, commercials, if you want to call it on Facebook, or or advertisements that are everywhere. Yeah, I get them just about every other day. Right. And I think that's courtesy of our, um, our photography guy, Joe, from Virginia. He does a lot of that stuff. Uh, A lot of that stuff comes from our telemetry that we have in the the miller car um midnight uh, we have it all set up in that car so a lot of them videos come from him working the track while we're doing an event and we don't even know he's around he could be you know like right behind you taking a picture or a video behind you and you don't even know it so you don't even pay attention that he's there and then i'm looking at facebook one day and like oh i remember that right but um it, it seems I, I want to get it out there more like, um, you know, NASCAR fans, right? They're complaining that people aren't sitting in the stands. They're not going to the racetrack. What happened to the the 90s NASCAR fan, right? They're not there no more. They are. They're just they're on TV. They're on they're on uh, they're watching it on TV. Right. So. um Maybe they're not going to the racetrack as much, but I think they're they're watching it more and more on TV, you know. So to try and get out, I know when you guys come out to Kentucky and do however we do it, whether it's a live podcast or or what we do, but um, you know, to get it out there to people more that they yeah. can come and and do this, you so know. I was I was talking to Rob a little bit ago, and. What we're going to do is he is going to record the show or record it while I'm in the class. And then okay. after, after the class, he's going to record it as we as we're taking off. And then I'm going to do Facebook Live when we do the drive around. 
for the ride. There you go. And then when I go in to hop on the car, Rob said he'll be right there videoing as Rob taking off. No, I'm pretty sure the Wi-Fi will be cool there because on my Facebook page there is an in-car uh, fate. I don't think it was a fate. No, it might not have been a Facebook Live. I don't remember if it was or not. Um, there were some people I met there, um, and they didn't have a phone to record, so I let her either do a live video or she just recorded it, and then I think I sent it to them. But um, my phone works fine there, so I think the Wi-Fi will be fine. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I have good signal regardless because I've, I've been there numerous times and I've had full bars, so we should be fine. Right, right. Uh, um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I'm definitely excited about it. I mean, that, I don't know if you can tell, but Rob and I have been talking that, about true. it. And we're just like, this that's is toward be the end of the season, too. I wonder if it, you know, October, if it's going to be a little chilly there or not. I know... Uh, you know, a few weeks ago when we were there, it was like 30 degrees in the, in the morning. It was it was a little bit chipper, you know, uh, ice on the windows and stuff. And I'm thinking, wow, you got this cold track, cold, hard tires. You know, uh, you get people out there when we went hot at like 930. I'm like, I don't know. You know, I don't <laughs> like that. Like I told the ride drivers because I was buckle and ride side. I'm like, you guys, you know, take it easy and, and tiptoe around here a little bit and, you know, get some heat in this stuff. You know, um, a lot of times the brakes won't work until you get heat in them. I mean, the, the pads are so hard. You got to get heat in them before they'll even, you know, start gripping. Um, same with the tires. Right. So it's so dirty at Kentucky. Um you know, you got to get out there and, you know, get some heat in the tires, get some heat in the motors and trans and stuff like that, and, you know, and then let it go. But, um, yeah, it was kind of chilly. It was, uh, Dover was kind of the same way. So it's still a little chilly in the mornings up around here, you know, Dover, Kentucky. Um, I don't know if Rich Richmond will be the same way or Bristol in a couple of weeks, but uh, heck, we deal with it. Yeah, it's October nineteenth is when we're gonna when we're gonna do the live show. So we're uh, kind of toward the end of the season. I think uh, November, November something. I think we do Phoenix. I think we go to Phoenix after that, and I think that's generally about it. Yeah. With some late model events at Houston and, and a couple other events, but I think that's generally winding down the uh, the season. And they even go to Toledo. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole uh that's a whole thing, right? Like um Sandusky, Toledo, that's a whole eight model gig. Sandusky, Toledo, um what's another one out there? Uh, uh I don't know if we go there or not, but I know we do Toledo and Sandusky. Uh IRP. I don't think IRP we never doing that. IRP's cool. IRP's fun. Yeah, that's fun for a late model event. You know, and them late model cars are a thousand pounds lighter with pretty much the same horsepower. Pretty much, you know, the gearing's different and they're lighter, right? So, um, a late model event is just as fun. You know, I mean, you might not be, you know, running 155, 160 miles an hour like you would at Michigan, but you know, you can feel the g forces and stuff in a late model. That's a fun time. Uh undoubtedly so i've had a couple people ask how do they go ahead and book one of these um driving experiences or like i've I've had numerous ones going man i want to do that now <laughs> right racewithrusty.com you can pick different packages um uh Facebook. Yeah, I put a I don't call the phone number. It's um, I don't know the number. Something fast. I just know the last part of it's fast. Um, but the easiest way, from what I believe, is you know the racewithrusty.com. I guess it gives you all the information. It gives you the track schedules. It gives you the whole uh, the whole rundown of everything that they that they do in the office. So it's four zero one five four three. Three two seven eight, and they the speedway tracks that they uh, have. It says the three laps. They're at 
three laps deal price, six laps deal price, 10 laps deal price, 14 laps deal price. Uh, it, the, it's not, I'm looking at it right now. There's a, I don't know if everybody can see it, but yeah, there's a, you can choose from Atlanta, Charlotte, Darlington, Homestead, Miami, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan, Nashville, Texas, or worldwide technologies for uh, the speedway tracks. I think there's 70 tracks in all between cup, uh, cup and late model that we go to. I know um, come September, we do the West Coast swing with the late models. It'll be, you know, uh, Idaho, Washington, California, um, Colorado Nationals. I think we do Pikes Peak with the cup cars. I'm not, yep. I think we do that. They don't even race there anymore, I don't believe, Pikes Peak. Um, you know, that, that's funny, too, because we do Rockingham. We do Kentucky, we do Pikes Peak, and, you know, the NASCAR series don't even go there anymore. Um, it would be cool to see them go back to Rockingham. That's got brand new pavement on it when we went there last year. Um, I can see that becoming like the next Wilkesboro, right? Like North Wilkesboro, they're bringing that back. So I do believe we're trying to go there, too. I don't know if we're going to go there with late models um, or cup cars or both. I believe we have a um, I don't know if it's set in stone or what, but at Martinsville, I hear a Martinsville talk going around with uh, the late model cars and the cup cars going there. Uh, I don't know how uh, set that is, but that would be a cool venue to go to, uh, Martinsville. Um, anybody can pick whatever you know track they want to go to if they want to go fast or. If if they want to go fast in, in a, a short track or if they, you know, um, it's all up to the person what they want. Or they can do both. I mean, we have a guy that is a regular. He comes to Dover. He goes to Atlanta. He goes to Charlotte. Um, he does some of the late model stuff. He's uh, kind of like follows us around and uh, does a lot of the different tracks, which I think is pretty cool. Um, that would be a heck of a hobby. Right? Um but you know, you know, if I ever won the lottery, I wouldn't tell anybody there'd be, the, but there'd be signs, right? Like I'd be at every NASCAR track, I'd have a Prius with a small block in it, right? Or, you know, I mean, if, if somebody could actually, you know, have the funds to go to every Rusty Wallace experience track, that would be, that would be fun, right? And and that's what I get to do, right? I get to go. Right. To each of these, I can say, hey, I've driven Texas, I've driven Dover, Loudoun, uh, Charlotte, Atlanta, Homestead. I mean, and it just goes on and on and on. And how many people could have a job like that, right? I mean, right. Um, you, you drive at more tracks than most of the NASCAR drivers. Yeah, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, people all the time, they're like, well, you got a dream job. Yeah, yep. yeah, I guess I do. I don't think of it like that, I guess. Um um, I don't think of it just as a job. Um, I'm kind of passionate about this because I love to see that look on people's face when they get out of the car. You know, that's uh, that's what keeps me going, right? So, um, I, I I had a um, I was buckling Charlotte one day, and a guy had come to pit wall with one of those kind of wheelie walker things and i walked up to him i said great take a ride he goes yeah i got about two weeks i said well where are you going in two weeks he goes no i got about two weeks i said well what, well let's get you in the car he goes well no well i gotta do this it's kind of like my bucket list uh, he goes uh cancer got me and i'm like well well what are you doing in two weeks he goes well that's what the doctor gave me and i'm like oh what really and I, I basically picked him up and put him in the car, you know, and and uh, that ride car come back in. We got him out of the car and that smile on his face. He's probably not here anymore. Right. So um, for him to tell me that, you know, doctor gave me two weeks and I'm like, whoa, you know, that kind of like a punch in the chest kind of thing. Like this guy is here doing this and he has two weeks to live. Right. And. And uh, to see his face when he got out of the car, he didn't even think about that. He was thinking about what we were doing at that moment, and he had a great time rather than sitting home and doing nothing, right? And 
for him to come out and do that, you know, one of his bucket list things I thought was really cool. But, um, and that's what keeps me going. I get to see that every weekend. Every weekend I see the different people that come out. I hear their stories and I see that smile when they leave. That's cool to have a job that you're passionate about and you get to, and you get to do it for a living. Right. Uh, and then when I have time, I get to be a fan too. Right. So, uh, we don't race or we don't, we're not racing, right. We're at school. So we don't operate, uh, <laughs> Memorial. we don't operate Memorial day. So we will spend the week, you know, my wife's a, a bigger gearhead than I am. And, uh, she's always, upset because she can't go with me to these events and she has to stay home and work. So uh, Charlotte, you know, for the 600, we're going to be there with the camper for the whole week. Uh, so we get to be fans that week. Um, hopefully some VIP passes or, you know, something will come our way that we can, you know, you know, go do our thing and have a good time. Right. And uh, we can get on the other side of it. You know, where, you know, um, you know, and then I get to work uh, with Alex Club and the O3 Arthur Car. So I wish I could do more. And I hope he's watching. Um, I re that's a bucket list for me is Talladega, right? I wish we did uh, a school at Talladega. But um, from what I understand, it would take so long to go through a class because the track is so big that we wouldn't get anything done. Um, I guess that's why we don't go there. So I guess ARC is running Talladega this weekend, this Saturday. I wish I could be there, but I got to be in Richmond. But um, I helped Alex at Daytona. We finished eighth, which I thought was great. I mean, he had a car that uh, would run up front. Uh, I knew he could run up front with that brand new Ilmore, brand new car he had. But that open checkbook, you know, to junk a car is just not there, you know. And to sit back on the lead lap and come home eighth, I thought was great. That was kind of like a win for a small ARCA team, right? But um, I get to go play with that at Charlotte. Hopefully, I can do that. Hopefully, I got to look at my schedule and see when his uh, ARCA race is at Dover. Maybe I can get away and go do that. But um, I have a friend that's a, a team member on uh, the 88 uh, Matt Crafton truck. I I told him I'd be in Charlotte, you know, if they need an extra hand, you know, let me know. I'll volunteer and come over and, and do that. Like, I can't get away from it, right? So um, if I'm not doing the Rusty Wallace experience or or ARCA, I got carts, dirt carts out in the garage. I built a brand new dirt cart over the winter. I haven't even been on track with it yet. I don't even know if I'll get to be on track with it. But um, I've got two dirt carts out there that I like to go race. But um, I have it all around me. I mean, it's um, I'm kind of immersed in, in just the racing, whether it's, you know, NASCAR or the experience and and uh, this comes first. So, um, you know, it, I'm living my best life, I guess you could say. Right. So, um, you know, where I've been in the past and where I'm at now, you know, is is crazy to think. Uh, I, I just can't fathom where, where I've been and where I am now. So. Cool. When you when you get down to Charlotte, definitely hit me up. I'm only about eight exits away from Bruton Smith. Um, oh, okay. so, so you want to know places to go eat, you know, uh, pretty, some of the best I'm, tours. Right. Uh, I'm pretty familiar. Uh, I think it was 2019. Uh, we did the two weeks uh, okay. camp in Charlotte. Uh, we did the All-Star Race. So I'm um, standing the back of uh, – the winner circle um, in front of the media center. And I'm standing with Richard Childress and Larson come walking down after he won the all-star race. And I'm taking a selfie of the media center and he stuck his head in like this and he photo huh. me. So we were there two weeks. So I went to, to the comedian store or not comedian store to the, to the um, one of the, you know, Walgreens or whatever. And I printed the picture off. And I caught him at um, Food Lion or something doing autographs, and I put it in front of him. I said, you remember this? And he signed it for me, which I thought was pretty cool. But, yeah, he photobombed me coming down there when he won the All-Star Race. So we're familiar. You know, um, we got um, 
Eddie Yao, who worked at uh, JGR at the time, we got kind of got a behind the scenes tour of uh, Joe Gibbs Racing. We got a lot of friends in the the truck series, you know, and kind of go in and get a tour of the truck, you know, the truck teams and that. Um, and you know, with my some of my connections through. Uh, doing the guitar stuff. Uh, my buddy that made these guitars here passed away a couple of years ago now, but I kind of still have those connections from, you know, setting different meetings up like with Richard Childress and that. So I've paid it forward myself. So um, with my Facebook groups, of course, I get all the time like requests. Hey, can you get VIP passes? Hey, can you get me hot passes or can you get me this? And I, I, I get it all the time. And, uh, you know, there might be one that might uh, hit me the right way. Like um, my little buddy, Dylan, Dylan Barley, he uh, back in 2015, we helped him go and and meet Jeff Gordon out at Chicagoland. Um, a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, a lot of um, a lot of setting up with John Edwards, who was uh, Jeff Gordon's PR guy at the time. I think he's Larson's PR guy now. Um I took a guy from Pocono, uh, Pennsylvania. I took him to Pocono. Uh, I set that up with the uh, track uh, president, he gave me some tickets um, in the stands, and I got some VIP passes from uh, RCR. And uh, I took him, you know, to the garage area. So um, last year when we went to the 500, I took a disabled Navy veteran uh, with us. I was like, hey, let's go, you – you know, I heard your bucket list was to go to the Daytona 500. I said, where do you want to sit? He goes, well, up there somewhere. I said, well, how about you sit in the pit box? He was like, yeah, right. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm serious. We're going to go sit you in the pit box. We'll figure out which one when we get there. I think we're a track house. Mm -hmm. um, my buddy Dan Crocker, who is the chef at track house, you know, uh, I see them all the time. You know, I, I go over there and eat, you know. Um, after everybody else is eating, I can slide in there and have some food when I'm at the racetrack. But, um, you know, I took the disabled Navy veteran to the Daytona 500 and we're walking through the garage area and it's, Hey Joe, Hey Joe. And he's like, how do you know all these people? I said, I have no clue. I, you know, <laughs> don't somehow, you know, I don't, I don't know. But, um, some of the relationships that I guess I've built, you know, throughout the years, I guess, I don't know. Um, so I think he ended up in uh track house. Uh, I don't remember which pit box, but he was right in front of the yellow line. He sat down, hung his cane. He sat there and watched live pit stops and the jumbotron was right behind us and he had a ball, but I'll try and pay it forward that way. Right. So uh, I guess that, I don't know, keeps me honest. Right. I don't know. Uh, you know, it, it gives the average fan that, you know, uh, look from outside the fence. Like, I guess that's why I give the lug nuts to the kids that are looking in because they're not in there, you know? Yeah. And um, when I walk through the garage area at Daytona and all the people that are on top of the garage looking down, it's like, wow, I'm down here. You know, it's not really like that anymore. It's like, hey, Ross or or whoever I see, you know, it's it just, we just go through, you know, and and uh, and have a good time, right? And we usually camp, so it's, um, you know, we're a week at Daytona in the infield or a week at Charlotte in the infield or Pocono or, or Loudoun or wherever we decide to go. But we don't get to go camp uh, that many NASCAR races because I'm usually busy doing this. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm going off on a tangent here, I guess. Nice. No, you're good. Yeah, I was I was expecting uh you Bobby to to chime in with your you know if you want to go to the infield in Michigan with me. There you go. Always I heard that's a, I heard that's a party. Oh, <laughs> Michigan the hoop. Yeah, I, <laughs> I want to go to Talladega and experience that cuz I've heard Well, I was told to, I was told to leave the kids home for Dega, so I was I was told if you have young children for infield talladega boulevard to leave the kids home nah, if so, you have kids if you have kids leave them at home from michigan and feel too right it, it, yeah i mean it's, it's not pg at all right <laughs> you know what's kind of funny for me is i quit drinking three years ago so it's been 
three years since I've had any kind of alcohol and I go and I camp infield and what do you see? Right. So it's different for me now because years ago when we went camping, we were all, you know, wheelbarrow races with Blaney and, you know, Ryan Blaney's killing uh, Mm -hmm. little bottles of fireball and that. Right. And, and Blaney's a hoot. And, you know, we're all partying, having a great time. Now I don't drink anymore. And I go there and I, I, I watch. And I, I people watch and and I'm like, uh oh, he's done or or she's done or wow, why is he laying in a mud puddle? You know, and it, it's kind of a different right. It's kind of a different view now. And they don't care. They're having a ball at this NASCAR race. I heard Dover, one of the campgrounds at Dover that way. But, you know, and it doesn't really bother me. I just, you know, like uh, I just watch. You know, we have a good time. We do what we're doing. And and if people are drinking, that's great. You know, I don't care. But um, just to be on the other side of it, because I don't drink anymore, doesn't mean I don't have to go, right? So um, it, it is a hoot to, man, they're, they're going to be hurting when they wake up, right? So I don't have to worry about that anymore. I just, you know, do my thing and, and have a good time. And, you know, uh, you know NASCAR races, Camping infield is probably the most fun I've ever had, you know. Um, you know, people want to get stuck in traffic and go sit in the stands. That's great. But try the camping out. And that's a hoot. That's great. Um, that's, yeah, that's the most fun. I'm, I can't wait for, for Charlotte 600. We have uh, Camp Spot 109, which is coming out of four right on the fence. So we'll be in infield. And of course, you know, um, like what you said, you have, uh, you know, like what Lancaster's barbecue down there. So we, you oh, know, yeah. our shops, in, our shops in Mooresville. So I, when I'm in Charlotte, I'm at Mill Bridge. Um, you know, um, you know, Ryan Newman's standing next to me. Kyle Bush is over here. We're at Mill Bridge or whatever. You know, when I'm in town, um, if we're doing Charlotte, when we're done at Charlotte, I'll go back to the hotel and I'll. I'll go over to Millbridge and hang out. Um, my friend Corey DeMarco, who's a, a tire changer on the 88 truck, he, uh, his son Chase races over at Millbridge. So I'll go over there and help them out. And right, the racing is all over, man. I, I work all day at Charlotte doing the experience. And then I got to jump in the truck and run over to Millbridge and do some more, right? Um, but that's... That's, um, that's, the, that's the hidden gem around here is... You know, that's where that's where they go to be with their family. Right. And, you know, and, you know, if you're in a, you know, a fan, you know, that's where they're going to be. You're not going to get up there and talk to them at Charlotte. You know, you want to be you know, Clint Boyer, you know, and his boy and, uh, you know, Ryan. And now uh, who is it? Logano. Mm-hmm. Arvick. That's where all that's where they're all at, you know, Thursday, Friday nights. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but nobody nobody chases them around over there. You don't see a no. lot of fans like, you know, mobbing them. That's family time over there for them. You know, that's they get away from that NASCAR stuff. They're over at Millbridge with their families. You know, I mean, I happened to talk to Kyle Bush because he was standing right next to me. You know, yeah. I was like, hey Kyle, hey, how how'd you do out of Vegas? Like, I didn't watch it. I was doing the experience, right? I didn't even see the race. So I finished third or whatever he said. Okay, cool. Good job. See you later. You know, Newman, I I run Newman's cool. Newman was uh, doing a test. Uh, we had Motor Mile Speedway in Virginia last year. And I was at Motor Mile doing something with the cup cars. And Newman was testing the open wheel modified. And um, I got to talk with him a little bit at Motor Mile. And then I think it was a week or two later, I'm at, I'm at Millbridge and his daughter brooklyn was racing the cart and he stand next to me and he looked at me and goes oh you're the guy from motor mile like you remember me really i mean uh who am i right i mean you're ryan newman he's he was cool he was a pretty down-to-earth guy but um you know nobody's chasing each other around like at in a cup garage you know cup garage you know you get harvick that comes out everybody's you know whatever but mill bridge is laid back and that's family time for them I wouldn't even chase anybody around it. You know, I'm not a, I mean, I'm at Millbridge, you know, helping on a cart, but I'm not like, 
you know, chasing anybody across pit road to get an autograph or something. It's like, Hey Ryan, how you doing? Or Hey Kyle, how you doing? Or whatever. But, um, that's a fun time over there. I want to bring my cars there. Right. Yeah. That'd be fun. You, you come on down, call me. I, I will definitely help out and watch. They need a, a an old man class over there. If I, <laughs> I mean, that's what I run up here. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a predator novice class for one cart. And then uh, um, I have the uh, ghost motor on a brand new one I just built. So it's like a, a mini dirt dirt modified. So uh, it's a predator motor on that. Uh, I haven't even had it out yet. I've had it around the yard, but that's about it. Um, it seems like it's wicked fast and I'd love to go test it. But we're not up to speed here. The tracks aren't up to speed yet. Uh, another week or two, I think. A lot of rain up here, a lot of cold weather. So um, they need something up here like they have at Millbridge, like a Tuesday night, you know, date, you know, where when I'm home, you know, I can load up on a Tuesday night and go, you know, and have some fun driving myself. Um, but, you know, sporadically, you know, I get to drive. I thought I was going to get to run Dover this past weekend, but I didn't get to run it. You know, I didn't get to drive. That's okay. You know, when it's fun when, oh, guess what? You're driving this weekend. Oh, really? And it happened at Kentucky. I'd never driven Kentucky yet. So um, I had to fill in for somebody that wasn't there or, or whatever. Uh, and I got to drive midnight and give rides at Kentucky, which was a blast. So, um, so, so if I get in a passenger seat and you go, this is my first time doing this. You know, it's funny. Um <laughs> I've loaded people in a car and I'm buckling them in, of course. So you got your your two shoulder belts, your lap belts, you know, crotch belt, right? So you try and be a little, you know, you know, reaching for that crotch belt, right? You know, mm -hmm. you're buckling somebody in the car and they'll look over at the driver. So how long you been doing this? And I said, what are you talking about? I got them at Home Depot this morning. You know, they were outside <laughs> looking for work and I asked them if they they needed something to do for the day or or uh this is his first time, you know, he, he stayed at a, uh, you know, a Holiday Inn Express last night or something, right? So it, it's uh, it's kind of funny that you say that, right? So um, really, this is his first time? Oh, no, 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 no. We're just joking around, right? So um, we caught up with a lot of the, the you know, the students. It, it's, you know, it... Uh, I guess it breaks a little tension up. I mean, I've had people get in a car that are claustrophobic, you know, and and I've had some people that didn't make it through. But um, for the most part, I can take somebody that's claustrophobic and I can get them in the car and I can get them through it. You know, the quicker I get them off pit road, they forget about that. Once they're out there on the track, they forget about it, you yeah. know. Um, but when you're in a Gen 4 car and you're 6'4", 270, you're kind of crammed in there with a helmet on and a Hans device and belts. Yeah, it's kind of cramped. Um, like, I guess if you got locked in a trunk of a car, I wouldn't like that, right? So, so, that's, so that's how Jimmy, is that how Jimmy Spencer felt every weekend? Probably. <laughs> well, I mean, he's a pretty big guy, but, uh, Boy. you know, uh, I'll put people's helmets on last. Usually I'll put people's helmets on and Hans advice on before they get in the car. And then when they get in the car, it's over, you know, I got to get out, you know? And if I know right off the, a lot of people don't know they're claustrophobic until they get in one of these race cars, you know, they're not built for comfort, you know, they're built, they're a race car, you know, they're not, a lot of people get in, whoa, this is different. You know, I didn't expect this, you know, um, so we'll put them in the car and I'll unzip the fire suit and let them get air, you know, and then I'll put your belts on and then I'll put their helmet on and clip the Hans device real quick. And I tell the driver, get out of here, get out of here real quick. And he'll take off. Now you can't back out right now. Right. You're, you're gone. You can't back out. Now you're, you're, uh, you're out there having a good time. And when they come in from that, you know, that's all gone. You know, that's that whole anxiety of, of being crammed in that car is it's gone you know that smiles there right so you go from the anxiety and and the claustrophobia to this big smile from ear to ear you know and that's yeah. pretty cool 
Now, obviously, there's a flip side to that. Have you ever had somebody whip in the pit lane and rip the window net down? No, I've given rides to uh, some people that were reaching over and hitting me. Um, <laughs> uh, like, slow down, slow down. I, I, they, I had to come in because they were beating on my arm. Oh, wow. um, for the most part, um, I'll, I'll kind of tell people that are, you know, a little apprehensive, uh, you know, I'll tell them, look, I'm going to go out there and I'll be easy on it. And if you seem to enjoy it, give me a thumbs up. I'm not going to hear you. You know, if you're enjoying it and you want me to go faster, give me a thumbs up. And if I see the thumbs up, I'll go, you know, or if you give me a thumbs down, I won't, you know, so I'll give them a choice, you know, right. I, I've been doing it long enough to where I can tell if somebody is going to, you know, freak out or if they're going to go from being nervous and scared to, you know, having a time of their life. Right. I'm, I'm so, 99% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there. Yeah. Right. Maybe there's one or two times where I've had to come in and they just couldn't do it. You know, uh, maybe one or two, and this is just me personally, maybe one or two times where they were too claustrophobic to um, not stay in the car with a helmet on and the belts. Um, I, I can remember one time uh, there was a fellow like that and we had the exotics over on a skid pad. So we traded out the, I said, you want to go drive the exotic car then? You know, if you can't do this, you want to go drive the Ferrari or the Lamborghini? Oh, really? You know? Um, so he still had a good time. He didn't leave. Oh, well, I didn't get to do anything, right? He actually got to go over and drive whatever he drove, whether it was the Lambo or the Ferrari. Um, but that's cool that, you know, the Russ Wallace experience. So, you know, it it sounds like it fits. You know, it's if, if the, you know, if you're not there for what you want, it sounds like you guys are more than willing to – customize their experience to whatever whatever right. Fit. right i know uh we did a corporate event we had um late models go-karts and the exotics at orlando but that was a corporate event i i do believe you know and this doesn't happen every weekend i i believe there was an event where they had and don't quote me on it but i think they had late models and go-karts somewhere and you know, they have a blast in the go-karts, too. I know when we did the private event in Orlando, after we were all done and everybody left, we we jumped in a couple of the go-karts. Me and one of the other guys jumped in a go-kart, and we were ripping around. And, um, you know, we had to have our fun, too, right? But yeah. um, um, You got to have your cake and eat it, too. Right? But, mm -hmm. um, yes, we will accommodate, you know, uh, the needs of what uh, the student needs, you know? I mean, if they need a ladder to get in the car, we'll make it happen, right? So uh, if they need a cushion, so I, I'll joke with people, you know, you get somebody that's, you know, five foot, you know, and they can't reach the pedals, you know, uh, you want me to get you a phone book, you know, or <laughs> we, have, we, have we have cushions, we have totes, and we have cushions to sit on, we have cushions we can put behind them, you know, to bring them closer to the pedals to bring them up higher so they don't have to look you know under that space in the steering wheel you know so um whatever we need to do to make that student comfortable and that's key too you know um a student being comfortable in the car um they're not going to be scared right um if they can see what they're doing and they can hear what's going on and they can follow instruction they're having the time in their life. Heck yeah. And that's, um, that sounds like an awesome experience. Absolutely. And I just, I just talked to Rob and he, he said, let Joe know we're excited. Right. That'll be a fun time. I mean, uh, like I said, Kentucky is, is a blast. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's very abrasive and, and we go through a ton of tires there, but that's okay. That's yeah. what we're there for. That's all right. As long as we don't crash, we're all right. <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> you know, it, it, it happens, but you know what? We're, uh, you know, things happen, right? I mean, um, I know there was some pictures. Uh, 
have to send it to you. There were some pictures of an M&M's car. There was an incident in Kentucky, and uh, the M&M didn't look good on the side of the car, And uh, but everybody was safe, and that's the key thing is safety, right? So if something like that does happen, you know, we're all fine. Um, and it just happened to be an 18 M&M's car. I mean, we have three of them or four of them. I mean, we have a um, Susan B. Coleman 18 pink car. Uh, we have two or had two uh, 18 M&M's cars. And I think we have one other one. Um, but we have three or four of those cars. So um, one is a big, we call it the big bush because it's got a bigger window opening um, that we use for for bigger people, right? And and then there was Little Bush, and I think it was Little Bush that had the incident. Um, I haven't seen the the breast cancer awareness car lately, so that's floating around somewhere. Um, but I think we have the had the three cars. I think we're down at two eighteen cars now. But um, hey, Bobby. hey, Bobby, can I call Dibs real quick for Kentucky? Right, the eighteen car. No. Uh, hopefully yeah. it shows up. Hopefully it shows up out there. Um, I think my favorite car is the the five Pavilion, uh, the Kyle Larson car. I think that's my favorite. I know when we did Charlotte, I had uh, nine Napa on my trailer. I had the nine Mountain Dew car on my trailer, and I had the five Pavilion car on my trailer. And I had to go through Hendrick Motorsports and park in front of the sign over by the gift shop. And I went to the gift shop because I wanted to buy a noggin hat, which is right there, the five noggin hat I got. Um, and I wanted to get one, right? So I, I'm I'm right there. Why not stop? So mm -hmm. um, and when I parked in the little cutout, you know, the Hendrick sign was right there above my truck. And I'm like, well, this is a Kodak moment. Right. And when I went into the gift shop, the employees and everybody that was in the museum of the gift shop went outside and started taking pictures. Which I thought was pretty cool, but um, I got my noggin hat, and um, you know, it it was just it worked. You know, I had all three Hendrick cars on on my trailer, and that can be very dangerous because going down the highway, all you get <laughs> is the camera from everybody's phone. You can see it in your mirror, and they will slow down next to you. And people will get behind me and wait for me to pass. And they'll pull up on this side and they'll play this little game. And they don't realize that there's a couple of times you almost crashed me there, bud. You know, like uh, I run out of room and you're sitting right next to me. And it can get pretty aggravating, too, out there on the highway. Right. So um, there have been some close calls uh driving these cars around the country i know last year i put fifty six thousand miles driving on one of these trucks or you know between all the trucks i've got to drive between phoenix and you know um late model stuff out in california to pikes peak and colorado to you know loudon and homestead i mean pick all four corners right there of the country right um fifty six thousand miles that's i mean that's not a lot but um that's enough when we're you know it's not including flying like if i got on a plane and flew you know to pick up a truck and trailer but um a lot of work a lot of driving a lot of hours uh a lot of smiles that's what i like to see a lot of smiles that's what we get and the compliments i i, I tell people go on the uh, rusty wild's facebook page and you know put on there what you just told me you know, oh, I will. And some people do, but some people don't, you know, some people still talk about the experience. You know, I hear them all the time. I hear, hey, I remember when I was out there at, um, uh, I think it was Iowa. There was a guy, Jay Ard, uh, he races carts. And he come out there and the IRP, he come out and he drove a late model out there. And he asked me the other day, hey, Joe, uh, you going to be at IRP? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I don't know where I'm at tomorrow. You know, things change with us daily, you know, as uh, I get home, I got home from Dover, uh, it was midnight Sunday, and I unloaded Monday morning, and, and I'm right on whatever broke on these three cars, or whatever needs maintenance, whatever needs, you know, fixed, and I don't unpack, that suitcase stays right here by the door, 
Um, I might just, you know, wash the clothes that got dirty and put them right back in. And you that's a very good. understanding wife. Well, like I said, she's a bigger gearhead than I am sometimes. Ah. And and after 18 years, she walking it to the truck. You know, I'll see you when you get back. But, um, you know, and, she and then, you've also got to be one of the, the coolest neighbors on the block. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't have any. Well, my neighbors are kind of up the road and the people that are across the street. I've got two two close neighbors and they're pretty cool. Um, in fact, uh, the people across the street from me, uh, Brenda texts me today. She's like, I'm going to be out of town. Take Michael with you to Richmond. You know, like, that'll be cool. Take him with you. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I wish it was that easy to like, hey, just get in a truck and go. Right. Um you know, my wife, my wife's an EMT with AMR. So she's wanting to do like NASCAR Watkins Glen, but mm -hmm. she's an EMT. I did that years ago. I did the fire EMS thing years ago. Um, she, as an EMT, you're not going to be like jumping in the truck out on the track. You know, you got your medics, you got your doctor, right? So um, somebody crashes, you know. EMT's not going to run out there. You know, it's like the boo-boo bus. That's uh, somebody cuts their finger on pit road, you're going to go take care of it. Or somebody's drunk in a campground and they're face down in a mud puddle, you're going to go take care of that or whatever, right? So yeah, as an EMT, you're not going to, probably not going to take care of much at a cup race or an Xfinity race. But, uh, you know, she's, Right there next to me, my first event I did at, at Oswego Speedway, she was right there. And I'm glad she was there. It was probably 90 degrees outside. I sat in that car for seven and a half, seven, three quarters an hour. Uh, and I gave rides all day long in that car. And she just kept pouring water down my back. I mean, it had to be 140 degrees in the car. And I was in there seven hours. I lost like five pounds that day. Just I, I was I was done when I got out of that car, but I had such a great time. I didn't care. Right. I right. went home and I was like, like spaghetti. I just I had to drink and hydrate and and I couldn't wait to go to the next one. So it kind of got back into me. I guess once racing's in your blood, you know, it's just going to stay there. You know, mm -hmm. it never leaves you. So um, instead of spending big money to go. Uh, race a, a dirt late or a street stock or whatever. Um, I get paid to go do this. You know, I get paid to go play with race cars all day long, right? Or or work on them out here. You know, I got all my equipment out here. I can take care of whatever I need to take care of out here, whether it's a gear swap, you know, clutch. Um, the only thing I'm not doing out here is like putting motors in. Um you know, uh, you know, we we went through a couple motors and a couple of the cars at Dover, uh, little window in the pan. Um, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't have a motor sitting in the corner. That's all going to Mooresville, uh, Pit Road in Mooresville. It's going there. Uh, or if there's a little body work or something, um, that's going to go up to Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Our body shop's up there with the office. Um, we have Lonesome Pine Speedway in, in Coburn, Virginia. Uh, we have that track. That's a cool Saturday night track. If anybody lives out that way, um, there's our late model shop is out there. So um, there's a, uh, they do a lot of wrap work out there um, on all the cars. Uh, we used to have motor mile, but they didn't redo that lease for this year. So uh, we're all over the place, right? So between Mooresville, Coburn, uh, Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and here, uh, me, um, I think we got it covered. I hope we do. Uh, we used to have a shop in Indy, um, but they closed that last year. I guess that's why I'm around now. So, um, yeah. So, uh, I think we covered a lot of, like, um, uh, the basics. Like, how do we get, you know, to go do this? You know, I, I see a lot, you know, I wish I could afford to go do it. It's not that expensive, you know, from what I can tell. I mean, I don't handle that part of it, but um, 
I see just all the people out there and, and they're doing it. So uh, everybody needs to keep coming so we can keep doing this. Sounds like an absolute awesome literal experience. A absolutely. It's fun. It's a fun time. We hope to have you along with us, Dave, because that's going to be a blast. I am uh, October 19th. Um, I'll be uh, texting my boss tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to be off for a couple days. All right. Sounds good to me. We'll be taking that weekend off. Most definitely. Oh, absolutely. He'll be flying. Fine. into He'll be flying into Detroit and we'll all be crashing here. Hey, and then hey, hey, Bobby, I need you to come get me out of Metro. <laughs> <laughs> Find that permission slip from Junior somewhere that gives people off on Mondays when it rains <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> hey, here's my uh, here's my permission slip giving me the day off. That's from Junior. That's from Junior. Yeah, Junior. Who? <laughs> huh. All right, Joe. Well, I know you got to get up early tomorrow, so you can start heading my way. So uh, we don't want to hold you up too much. So appreciate you being on and. I'm Thank you, uh, Rusty Wallace Driving Experience, for allowing Joe on. And looking forward to seeing you guys in uh, October. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for having me on. I mean, this no was problem. fun. Joe, absolute oh, pleasure. Good. Thank you, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Nice meeting you guys. Yes. Same we'll here. Look, forward, look forward to doing this in October. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. You have a good night. Hey, you too. We'll be talking to you. All right. Sounds All right. good. All right. Have a good night. You too. You too. Segment three, race recap. Dave, action RV. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you start it out. Tell you what, if you know, if you think that that guy's got a great job, just imagine working for Action RV this week, uh, and going to see the experience, you know, that they had over at Texas with the Brahma Bull car and being on that. Um, I followed them almost all last week on Facebook and between him and his employees uh, from, I think one was in the middle of uh, victory Cirque, uh victory lane. Yep. You know, the rest of them, you know, all outstanding by Jeremy's car, you know, but on top of pit boxes, I'm almost thinking about getting back in the RV event industry. So before we start getting into the race recap real quick, I, I know we started it, but I want to let everybody know that the, the Rusty Wallace driving experience has a spring mega sale that they launched today. Late model tracks, 10 laps for $99, all cup tracks, 60 to 70% off. And the promo code is saved now. Think, think about that. You can be rocking a, a late model for a hundred bucks. Right. I mean, I don't know about, you know, very many families, but a dinner for me and just my son is 50 to 60 bucks. Right. And you're talking, you know, I'm going to go rock a late model for, you know, at 130 miles an hour. Yeah. I'm not getting work done on Monday. No. I, I am doing this all. Hey, 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 you know. <laughs> <laughs> dude i'm People telling you I, for, for you, know, you think bucks, i though, you think i talk bucks, a I lot now Toledo. right i was just thinking that what oh, let's do a burnout <laughs> I, I that was going to be the question i was going to ask him is you know can you know somebody drop the jack when i go out of the pit stall <laughs> you know if i'm going to get the experience you know i'm dropping the hammer yeah we, we were joking around yesterday and i go you know of all people, Dave's going to be the one that pulls into the, comes off the track, pulls down pit road, and all you're going to see is him pull the window net down and go, yeah. <laughs> Either that or, you know, he's going to come over the wall and say, I want you to hit the fucking pace car. <laughs> Why? You've hit everything else on the track. <laughs> I want you to be perfect. Sorry, I didn't mean to drop that. I apologize. Yeah, no, you're good. So now that we're, now that we we're done with uh, the segment two, so yeah. se segment three is brought to you by Action RV, mm -hmm. and I've by far the content that they dropped this weekend, like you were saying, was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. 
I yeah. mean, like you said, they were on they were on Pit Road, they were on they were in Victory Lane, they were standing next to Jeremy's car, they were with Steve, by Steve Carnes and Jeff O'Day. They were just having a heyday. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then, you know, as far as a race recap for, for Jeremy and the crew, uh, from having their their hiccups and quarries from practice to qualifying, you know, and still have a, I'm going to, I'm going to call it a good race, you know, whether, you know, I want to call a top 20, uh, a good race or not, you know, but, you know, what was it? Uh, having a sputter to low oil pressure, you know, not qualifying that great, you know, Yeah, they, that was definitely a uh, a blast to, to watch. And Jeremy's car was actually, uh, I mean, they they had a good car, had some troubles, still was able to come up to P16, which was awesome. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed watching the, the Xfinity race. You oh, know, absolutely. Best race you know, I've seen. Right. I know me and you talk all the time and, you know, this is a kind of a show about the, the lower series. Um, I would rather tune in at one thirty, you know, Eastern time on a Sunday than almost, you know, watch it on, you know, Fox or whatever it is, you know, on Sunday. You know, I, I truly enjoy watching the truck series and the Xfinity series. And then, you know, I unfortunately I don't get to watch a lot of the the Arca series, um, just because it's it's not televised in my area, um, either that or you know I just get wrapped up in anything. But uh, you know you can you can ask my I ask my girlfriend I'll drive three hours and when I get there, she had the race on for me. You know it uh, what was it probably? Well, no, it was. Uh, uh, when he turned his car into a uh, modified, what was that? Two weeks ago. Yeah, Martinsville. Yeah, Martinsville. Uh, drove three hours in my car. You know, we got there, and you know, we've got a new Jeremy Clemens fan. Yeah. Yeah, you know, she's like, oh, I can see him. I can see him now. Obviously, Martinsville was not photogenic, but he got a lot of TV time. Right. <laughs> Absolutely, he did. <laughs> right. So that's our race recap for the for this week. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave, you got a piece behind you that uh, I do. I, I yep. want you to kind of throw that out there of what we're doing. Hey guys, what we're what we're doing is uh, we're trying to raise money for Jeremy Clements Racing. Uh, by doing that, uh, what we've done was um, we've given. I would say every Jeremy fan or pretty much any racing fan, the availability for a small price to own uh, a bumper. I mean, autographed by Jeremy Clements, um, you know, in person, uh, the shipping's already been paid for. Literally all you have to do is drop a line on either, you know, Facebook or uh, pretty much any Bobby's on just about every social media site. Um, you can hit me up, Dave Henderson. You know, I'm on 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 Facebook. There's not a lot of stuff that you can get, um, even on like eBay and stuff like that. So this is almost an opportunity that you can't buy. As you know, what are we doing? Thirty bucks per square. 30 bucks per square or two for 55. It's, yep, it's a yeah. steal of a price compared to what, if you get on racing warehouse or any of the sheet metal places, to be honest, there there's like three to four or 500 bucks. Yep. I mean, that's it's a, normal. That's normal running cost. We bought yep. it and then we're going to end up doing the squares. So somebody can get it for super cheap. Right. And, and we understand everybody cannot afford, you know, three, four hundred dollars for for a bumper. That's that's why we're doing this. Is we've 
came together as Area 51 pod, Racing Podcast to give you guys, the viewer, an opportunity to have something, you know, stellar. You know, there's not a lot of people, you know, you, sh- you want to be a racing fan and somebody walk into your house and go, do you have a bumper? And you're like, yep, got a bumper. You know, there, I can honestly say when people walk into to my house and I know Bobby's seen it, I've got um, a little bit of sheet metal, um, if you will. Um, and, you know, nothing against the guys at the Racing Warehouse. If there's a specialized item that you want, please go visit them. Um, Eric Absolutely. and and Christy and Emily and Rankin and um, uh, Linda, uh, absolutely tremendous people. They're actually helping us out with this. Um, but, you know, just do us a favor. And if it's something that you can do, you know, please just hit us up. Um, we'd be more than happy to ent- enter you in the drawing. And and think about it. 30 bucks, you know, for a, for a chance to win something uh, this cool. And there's not a ton of Jeremy Clemens stuff out there uh, for sale. Um, you know, it. You know, I wish I could find room for another one. I'd probably throw my, my hat in, you know, once or twice just for the the chance. But but definitely hit us up there. It's it's super cool and it's for a good cause. You know, if you're tuning in, obviously you're a racing fan or a Jeremy Clemens fan, and you know it's an absolute privilege to be able to do this for you. But ultimately, uh, we're doing this to help you know. Jeremy Clemens Racing, and that's where all the proceeds for the bumper are going. Um, so if you could just hit up me or Bobby, um, you know, enter your name in the the square. It's, you know, we accept PayPal, Venmo, uh, Cash App, uh, just about anything. Um, or if you see you know Bobby walking around, just you know, hand him thirty bucks, and you know he'll get it taken care of for you. Absolutely. As I say, we're doing this to support Jeremy. And yep. All that, all the money that we have raised is going to Jeremy and the team. Yep. And I mean, we did that uh, defender, and everybody loved it. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah, we got nothing. We we had no negative comments uh, come back from the winner of that. You know, you talked about a stoked racing fan. You know. To to get a, a cool piece like a, a Goodyear Fender, that that's cool. You know, what's a little bit cooler? Having a Camaro bumper. Absolutely. A big number 51 on the back. Uh what is ours? Uh Pacific Funding. Yeah, first Pacific Funding. Yep, first Pacific Funding is the main sponsor on that one. And these are race used folks. You know, it is a legitimate race used rubber behind it. You know, just it's it, they're epic pieces. Very, very cool. They they are. And I want to give a shout out real quick to Beatridge Barbershop, Spartan Waste, mm-hmm. Impel Union, Alliance Driveway Solutions, First Pacific Funding, Elite Towing and Recovery. Whitetail Smokeless, Fly Inform Concrete Structures, Runner's Roost, Batman Designs, Action RV, Booze Pops, and then without the or without them, Jeremy Clements and Jeremy Clements Racing, this podcast would not be where it's at. So we appreciate everyone. Uh thank you guys very much. And uh don't and, the, and, the, and the fans, you know, yeah, everybody everybody watching. We we greatly appreciate it. You know. Uh, I was talking to, to Bobby and actually I think it was earlier this afternoon. You know, if it wasn't for you guys, you know, 17 episodes, you know, we never thought we would get this far and we get to do it because the uh, fans like you guys and we greatly appreciate it. We really do. This is, this is cool. This is, this is a dream. It, it, it absolutely 17 episodes. Uh, I'm, I can't thank everybody enough. Right. And Anna, we, we appreciate you. Yeah. And, um, 
talking about Anna. She's she does the cups, she does the flags. Uh, don't forget to uh, go to stickygears.com for the t shirts. All that money that we raise through all that goes back to Jeremy and the podcast. Um, so I greatly appreciate everybody. And um, episode 17 is in the books. So, Dave, great show. That was fun. Uh, thank, that was, you. thank you to everyone out there for watching. And I have a little... Uh, What you got for us, Bobby? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, I'm going to try to play the boost pop jingle, trying to get it to work. That was actually really catchy. So, we're going to click on the... It's a veteran on the dog ice cream truck. Boost pop, baby, it's boost pop, baby. Bringing people together. One boost pop at a time. Let's go. We're gonna rock out with our pops up, baby. It's the only pop that keeps you warm. You can rock out to go to boostpop.com. Y'all have a good night. We will see you next week.